What's up guys, Justin here, aka mhero25. So, welcome to my new series. I'm trying to start something new, something I can just talk about. Maybe something I can ramble about like once a week, you know. The best way to make content is to, well, have content you want to do. So, as a real player who's been playing this game for so long, like 2012 was when I really think I committed to the game. And uh, so it's been like uh, eight years, Jesus Christ. Uh, that number can vary. <laughs> I know I started like in 2001, that's when this game started and I started playing then. But you know, as an actual player, like committing it to like 2012. Uh, rambling, but my whole reason for stating that is because um, I've seen a lot of interesting cards come into the game and never see play or become very niche in um, areas. So I actually wanted to make a quick video called, uh, you know, up and coming cards, uh, or cards, uh, what do I call this thing? Cards with potential <laughs> in my little black notebook here. So, um, these are a few cards that I have noticed I've played or I've really, m m what's the word? <laughs> or cards I've really muddled over in my head to, and thought like eventually or sometime soon, they're going to be very relevant in the meta. And I believe um, this is the best time to talk about them. So let's talk about one that's kind of coming up right now, which is Revival Golem. Uh, this card, if you don't know what it does, it's a rock monster, level 4. Already fits in eman uh, Emancipators. But it has synergy as well because with one of the newer cards that they have... Uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Because, you know, Justin's never prepared to actually talk. He's just like making stuff as he goes. And if you hear that lovely singing in the background, if, you, if this can even pick it up, that is my wife, uh, you know, belting, and it sounds great, don't you think? <laughs> Alright, sorry. So, again, got... Mm. Those Battles of Legends, Justin, why don't you have to do all that? Ugh. Gotta have to edit this part out. Duh. But it has synergy with the with one of the newest cards called Miracle Rupture, which says send one level four or lower rock monster from your deck to the graveyard. And then it also has another clause. Then if Fossil Fusion is in your graveyard, draw one card. You can only activate one Miracle Rupture per turn. Uh, the second one doesn't really matter too much in, unless you're really putting the Fossil Fusion, the Fossil Engine into your deck, which Adam Antipaters can easily do. But the fact that this card can send a Revival Golem uh, to the grave is great because Revival Golem in itself has this text where if this card is sent to the graveyard, activate one of these effects, which is one, special summon it, two, add this card to your hand. The second one is situational, but the fact that you can get a free body on your board is amazing, especially in Atom, where they can have another one to overlay into Gallant Granite or have another free material to sink her up into uh, to the, to the levels, uh, to the level six or level eight, or even go to, um, uh, Savage Dragon or even Apollosa, and that's just one of the cards that just and, and I, I remember I picked up this card, I have a playset of it, and I was like, This card's gonna be good eventually because the only card at the time that could do it, uh, to my knowledge, was Foolish Burial, and you really wouldn't want to use that for a one for one like that, unless it was gonna net you like a lot of uh, you know, a lot of potential, like a uh, potential gain from your deck, like, unless it's like, you know, BA, uh, PK, uh, a malicious, or a bunch of other cards that can do it, but this is one of those things, it just didn't seem right at the time, and now it is becoming a huge one of, or a huge card to add into most any Atom deck. And so that's just card one I wanted to talk about. Card two is one I actually love playing myself, and it's really messed up my uh, one of my guys on my locals, um, and it's uh, Broken Line. Now, if you don't know what Broken Line does, well, let me pull it up and read for you real quick because this card is b -b -b busted. Now, uh, Broken Line reads. When a spell, trap card, or monster effect is activated in this card's column, when this card is set, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. This is a counter trap. Now, 
that sounds confusing and i'm not gonna lie the wording of it is weird it kind of reminds me of fusion line or the fu uh uh line break or something like that uh it's another one of the cards that sounds just like this uh fuse line yeah um and it's confusing but this one is very interesting and fun and this should have had more of a peak in a link format but it just didn't see enough play or see enough relevancy just because um this card if you if you place it anywhere it's a free it's a free negate on any monster effect or any spell or trap card activation which is crazy good the only stipulation is that you have to meet you know it has to be in the same column there's no cost there's no life point to pay there's no cards to discard there's no cards to send to the de from the gra to the graveyard there's no other requirement than it being in the same column and uh, this is also the same time where Mech Knights came out, so this should have like skyrocketed, but it just didn't see play, and I'm just so sad about that. It could have been really busted, but you know, you have cards that aren't situational that'll work better, like uh, Solemn Morning, Solemn Judgment, Solemn Strike. All the Solemn cards were available, and uh, you know, Heaven's Horn uh, always makes a, a a rotation back in the game occasionally. And this is one of those where I feel like if you are a smart enough player, you could really use this to your advantage and not have to worry about anything. And uh, especially like uh, if you can in, in uh, link format and Master Row Four, once you have the control, once you have control of one of the link zones, your opponent has to use that zone. So if you can always set it right there, that's just an assured negate unless they're not playing an unless they're not playing a a link a link based deck, which who wasn't at that point. And even if they did anything in that column, it's like it's like infinite and permanent, except it doesn't block up the whole column. It just like has to be in the same line, and that's still pretty good. So if you ever just really want to mess with one of your opponents, or if you feel like you're that next level Yu-Gi-Oh player, go for it because it is a fun card. And when you pull it off, it's just one of those things you can just give yourself a high five. Like I did it. <laughs> I still like it still messes with him today like every time he sees me setting broken line that's broken line isn't it like maybe play something and find out now the last card i want to talk about is a card that actually would have a lot of relevance nowadays in the august 2020 format and that is light imprisoning mirror this card again always comes in and out of meta it has importance it has relevancy and it's useful right now, just because if you are not playing a light based deck or have or are willing to uh, sacrifice some of your light monsters, it hits all of um, it hits all of Dogmatica. It hits everything. They can't they can special summon, but they can't get their surges. They can't do their gates. They can't send cards to the graveyard, and uh, you know they and they, it even stops ints. like they can't pop. Uh, they if Makawa comes out on the board, it can't do anything. Construct can't do anything. These are just ones from the Invoke version. I know. Not to mention, if you hit uh, use that, you can use it against Eldritch, and Eldritch the Golden Lord becomes useless. They still have the trap cards, yeah, but you know, um, if you can't get it back, if you can't get Golden Lord back on the board, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. And if with all the variations that are out right now, you can stop a uh, link cross. There's like the the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, wow, this card covers a lot. It even hits dinos, uh, like UCT, it's a light monster, so you're kind of screwed on that one. Argosaur can be used. I'm just discovering more things as I talk about it. And these are just decks I have personally played. I personally have played, and I personally know their weaknesses, I know their strengths. And I'm just saying like, wow. Light Imprisoning Mirror is a good card. So if you haven't heard from Tom Box, you're, hear you're hearing it from me, pick up this card. It's going to be good if you're planning to be competitive this season whenever that starts you need it you're gonna need it and it's better to have a card than not it's better to have a card and not need it than need it and not have it i mean like right now i'm, I'm gonna google i'm gonna search like the, the light light and prison mirrors and see what is the most expensive version we have yeah there it is So there are about eight copies available, uh, and some of them are actually from du from uh, Duelist League. So I think that's actually the newest set, like that Joey. Uh, Joey Pegasus thing. I could be wrong. No, I'm definitely wrong. 
This is through that like weird set where like you can get green and blue baby Sarasauruses, which I kind of want, but I'm like, I'm not spending $67 for a purple or 42 for a green. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. I just want shiny babies eventually. Wait, I'll wait for that. But yeah, uh, that's just one listing, but there's eight of them. And th like, some of them range from like, that one was like $5. And the cheapest one is from a Turbo Pack, Turbo Pack 2, which is 40 cents. And uh, even cheaper, from the original Gladiators Assault, where it originally came out of, it is 18 cents. Get this card. There's no reason why you shouldn't have this card at any given point. There are eight printings. If you want a shiny, the shiniest version, you can go for the Duelist League. But if you want one that's kind of obtainable, well, those are obtainable too. They're very, they're like three or three to five dollars or two, uh, three, yeah, three to five dollars. And then the shiniest one is uh, <laughs> Dual Terminal 7, which is four ninety three right now. So there's no excuses. Get this card. Be meta relevant, uh, even at your locals, like, cause you know there's gonna be that one person who's going to be playing Dogmatica of any version, and then, you know, it's going to be also a good card to keep for future references in the game. Well, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There'll be another one coming soon. I'm gonna try and make this one a weekly video, like cards keep coming up in the game where they're relevant or they could have potential, and I love talking about them, and I love now knowing I have a platform to do this. So yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. All right, guys. Well, this is Justin, aka here 25 signing out. Peace.